Welcome back to the RAS, ACS, and Behind the Knife journal cast on landmark papers in surgery. I am Elena Simpson, a general surgery resident from Oklahoma State University Medical Center, and I will be briefly reviewing the landmark proper trial, comparing transfusion of plasma, platelets, and red blood cells in a one-to-one-to-one versus one-to-one-to-two ratio. In the United States, injury is the leading cause of death among individuals between the ages of 1 and 44 years, and is the third leading cause of death overall. Approximately 20 to 40 percent of trauma deaths occurring after hospital admission are due to massive hemorrhage from truncal injury and are potentially preventable with rapid hemorrhage control and improved resuscitation. Damage control resuscitation is defined as rapid hemorrhage control through early administration of blood products in a balanced ratio, prevention and immediate correction of coagulopathy, and minimization of crystalloid fluids. Damage control resuscitation was developed to treat the acute coagulopathy of trauma and prevent dilutional coagulopathy. The pragmatic, randomized, optimal platelet and plasma ratios, or PROPER trial, was designed to address the effectiveness and safety of a 1 to 1 to 1 transfusion ratio compared with a 1 to 1 to 2 transfusion ratio in patients with trauma who were predicted to receive a massive transfusion. In the PROPER trial, Patients were randomized within each site into two different groups, and as such received a container of blood products corresponding to their assignment. The 1 to 1 to 1 group received a container with 6 units of plasma, a pooled 6 unit bag of platelets, and 6 units of red blood cells. They received platelets first, and then alternated between red blood cells and plasma units. In the 1 to 1 to 2 group, coolers from the blood bank were numbered. Patients received products from each cooler, alternating between the two. The even coolers contained 3 units of plasma, a pooled 6-unit bag of platelets, and 6 units of red blood cells. They received platelets first, and then alternated between 2 units of red blood cells and 1 unit of plasma. The odd-numbered coolers contained three units of plasma and six units of red blood cells, but no platelets. These patients received an alternating pattern of two units of red blood cells, followed by one unit of plasma. Transfusion of study blood products ended at several predetermined points, either achievement of hemostasis, death, declaration of treatment futility, no need for further blood products after randomization, or protocol violation. All other resuscitation, medications, and clinical treatment was per physician discretion. Eligible patients met all of the following. Highest trauma level activation, Estimated age of 15 years or older, or weight of 50 kilograms or greater if age was unknown. Received directly from the injury scene. Initiated transfusion of at least one unit of blood component within the first hour of arrival or during pre-hospital transport. The patient was predicted to receive a massive transfusion by exceeding the threshold score of either the assessment of blood con blood consumption score of 2 or greater, or based on the attending trauma physician's judgment. Exclusion criteria included non-survivable injury, burns greater than 20% total body surface area, greater than 5 minutes of CPR, or if they had already received more than 3 units of blood. The primary outcomes included absolute percentage group differences for 24-hour and 30-day mortality. 
These two outcome measures tested two separate questions regarding short-term effectiveness and long-term safety without adjustment for multiple comparisons per protocol. Secondary outcomes were pre-specified to evaluate the effectiveness and safety of the transfusion ratios. These included time to hemostasis, the number and type of blood products used from randomization until hemostasis was achieved, the number and type of blood products used after hemostasis was achieved up to 24 hours post-admission, 23 different complications, hospital, ventilator, and ICU free days, incidence of major surgical procedures, and functional status at hospital discharge or 30 days, whichever occurred first, as measured by discharge destination and Glasgow outcome scale. In evaluating the primary outcomes, there were no significant differences in mortality noted at 24 hours versus 30 days between the two groups. At 24 hours, there was a 12.7% mortality rate in the 1 to 1 to 1 group versus 17% in the 1 to 1 to 2 group. This was not found to be statistically significant. At 30 days, the 1 to 1 to 1 group had a 22.4% mortality versus 26.1% mortality in the 1 to 1 to 2 group. This was also not found to be statistically significant. However, deaths from hemorrhage within the first 24 hours were significantly decreased in the 1 to 1 to 1 group at 9.2% versus the 1 to 1 to 2 group at 14.6%. This was found to be statistically significant. Additionally, more patients in the 1 to 1 to 1 group achieved hemostasis, 86% versus 78%, but time to hemostasis was not significantly different. There was no significant difference in the total blood products transfused between the two groups, 16 versus 15 units respectively. There were also no differences in complications. This trial had a number of strengths. The trial addressed most of the limitations found in previous randomized trauma resuscitation trials, including the lack of blinded treatment assignment enrollment after bleeding had already slowed, survival and selection biases, and small sample size. The trial was performed under exception from informed consent so that patients with severe bleeding could be enrolled rapidly and required that all blood products be immediately available for infusion within 10 minutes of calling the blood bank. The selection criteria used in this study resulted in the rapid enrollment of patients who were severely bleeding, critically injured, in shock, and transfused with a median greater than 19 units of blood products. Separation of the ratio groups was maintained during the entire intervention period. And finally, there was a high degree of compliance with treatment protocols while simultaneously caring for patients with severe injuries. Limitations include insufficient power to detect differences smaller than the effect size, considered to be both clinically meaningful and affordable to study when designing the trial. The proper trial had 95% power to detect the pre-specified 10% difference at 24 hours and 92% power to detect the pre-specified 12% difference at 30 days if such differences existed. Observed mortality in the comparison group, the 1 to 1 to 2 ratio, was lower than expected, whereas in the 1 to 1 to 1 group, observed mortality was similar to what was projected. Therefore, a total sample size of 2,968 would have been required to detect the observed difference 
of 4.2%, given the observed 24-hour mortality of 12.7% in the 1 to 1 to 1 group with 90% power. A further limitation is the inability to independently examine the effects of plasma and platelets on outcomes. Even though the study was blinded until the opening of the containers, another limitation was that clinicians could not be blinded after the containers were opened without altering patient care. This trial was also limited by an inability to completely exclude patients with a non-survivable brain injury. 23% of deaths at 24 hours and 38% of all deaths at 30 days were associated with traumatic brain injuries. Finally, the issue of competing risks of death from hemorrhage and traumatic brain injury in trauma studies that require rapid enrollment before definitive diagnosis of all major injuries is a well-known problem and will continue to be an issue in future trauma studies unless novel regulatory, study design, or technological solutions are developed to solve this issue. Among patients with severe trauma and major bleeding, early administration of plasma, platelets, and red blood cells in a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio compared with a 1 to 1 to 2 ratio did not result in significant differences in all-cause mortality at 24 hours or at 30 days. However, more patients in the 1 to 1 to 1 group achieved hemostasis and fewer experienced death due to exsanguination by 24 hours. Even though there was an increased use of plasma and platelets transfused in the 1 to 1 to 1 group, no other safety differences were identified between the two groups. Again, I am Elena Simpson, a general surgery resident at Oklahoma State University Medical Center. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach me by email or on Twitter at Simpson Elena. Don't forget to review the content related to this topic with the current this Week in SCORE module, Initial Assessment and Management of Trauma, assigned this week. Thanks for listening.